Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to Late Night Leo's Talk Blood Stonewash Raptors with DMD Exotics. Tonight's episode is brought to you by our generous sponsors Luxurious Leopards, Holly's Homebred Reptiles, Top Notch Leopard Geckos, Designer Geckos, and ST Geckos. Check out the new Cutting Edge Leopard Gecko book by Ray Rohner of Designer Geckos called The Leopard Gecko Advisor, available now on Amazon. Or for a signed copy, go to their website at designergeckos.com. Or you might be able to win one tonight on the show. As usual, Ray is giving books away to callers. So tonight I've got Brian from B&B. Brian, how are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. And yourself, so, how are you doing? I'm I'm doing awesome. been waiting That's for this cool. show. I know we had to reschedule before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... You want to go ahead and jump into the history of B&B Exotics and how you got started? Because wasn't it one of your kids that wanted to get into this, and that's kind of what got you going? Well, well, you know what? How I got back into it, first of all, I'm going to tell you, i say about 15 years ago, I had got a gecko from my little boy. He was like about four. He was like about four. No, it's been a, it's been a while. He just now turned 20. So he was like about four, about 10 years ago. I went and got him a pet store gecko. And um, we sat up there, played with it for a minute, grew it up for about five months. And then on his birthday, I think he was turning like about six, on his birthday I said, well, we're going to get your gecko a little buddy. And uh, I went out to the pet store and bought a baby gecko, okay? I didn't know anything about males or females or how you shouldn't house males together or any of that. I didn't really know. I just knew it was a little lizard. It needed heat, and it ate little worms. (laughs) <laughs> so I go get him a little buddy, and we put the little one in there with the adult. We leave out the room for about, I'll say, 10 minutes. I come back in, and I'm looking around, and I don't see the little one. But the big one's tail sticking out of the height, right? I lift up the height, <laughs> and the little one's tail was hanging out of his mouth. He gobbled him up. <laughs> gobbled him up in like 10, 10 less than five minutes. So that kind of had me like, man, what the heck, what the heck, you know? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then I just, you know, I, I looked at him. I was like, man, that's kind of weird. They're cannibals. And then I chilled for about, back in 2009, me and my girlfriend, uh, we were on the web. We were on the web. And I remember leopard geckos, and I, I, I told her, I was like, check out these leopard geckos. And I was pulling up on the site, and I saw uh, the very first the very first website I came to was a guy called Your Gecko Guy. Yeah. You ever heard it? You ever seen his website? Oh, yeah. He had some cool stuff. This was back, like, in 2009. And I was like, dang, look at these. And then I kept searching. And what caught my eye, I'm going to tell you, what really had me going was when I pulled up his, his website. And I looked at them colors of them bells and of them of that electric line. I was like, yeah. oh, shoot, those are, those are bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, they looked at that website. That used to have me like, dang, look at how bright red those cackles are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, uh, I, I love Kelly's stuff. Hey, hey, man, I was I, I I called. That was one of the first companies that I called, but she never gave me a call back. Then I got in touch yeah. with Ron Tremper. I got in touch with Ron Tremper and JMG, and then I I went from there. I got real cool with uh, Jeff down at JMG, and he started showing me. He, he started like schooling me out, and uh, it was just like you know I got one, and then it became like. You know, Bentley sat back and was like, "That these are pretty cool. You, you really into this?" Because I was reading books, and you know, like geckos. Once you get one, it's like, it's like a tattoo. You just can't stop. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, before you know it, I had about about a hundred of them in one little room, <laughs> <laughs> all in tanks. When I first started, all of them was in tanks. I had like about fifty tanks all on my floor. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I got it. That's how I got going. So what were some of the first ones? Or I, I guess we should tell all the callers that if they want to call in, 
to one six four six seven one six five four zero three that we're giving away a a blood tremper at Raptor, right? Uh huh. Yep. He was one of my yeah. holdbacks. He's a real pretty one. If they saw it on Facebook, he, that picture does him no justice. He's he was one of my holdbacks. He's very he's very his his contrast is nice. His contrast yeah. is real deep orange. Yeah, so if you guys want to call in, go ahead and go over to the Late Night Leo's page on Facebook and give me your number and I'll put you on the air. So cool. uh, why, don't, why don't we get into the uh, the bloods? What kind of blood projects are you working on? Um, well, right now, right now, Morgan, I'm pretty much, man, I'm doing, um, I'm doing a little bit of everything. You know, I, I pretty much bred Ringo to... I I paired him to a little bit of everything because you know I only work with one albino strand. Yeah. I only I only work with one albino strand, and that's the trimpers. And I'm really I really really took focus on most of my projects to go around him, like the raptor, the blood stonewash raptor. I wanted to clone him. Was that was the idea that I'm going for? I was trying to clone him, so I got some blood hypos from JMG. I got him and then I got some nice tremper lineage of with the st- stone wash lineage and with some of the more high contrast uh sun glows and things of that sort. That's how I started with that's the first projects I started working with. Get nice. trying to get the carrot tail. I had to, I, yeah. I, I saw the carrot tail out of the first time I bred him. I hatched out um Back in 2000, what was it, 2011, 2012, I hatched out the very first female that I bred him to, hatched out like four males, and all of them had 100% care tail. And it was like, it was crazy. So I was like, hey, something's going on with that. And I, I just like yeah. to do bright oranges. I just like the, the, way, the, the way that the blood hypo looks, you know. Yeah, they're they're pretty unique. Yep. But I'm doing a little bit. Of, I've crossed him into um, I've crossed him into a couple subspecies to into the Afghanicus, some pure Afghanicus. Um, oh, cool! I've crossed him in into one of my best pairings was uh, what was it? Uh, I crossed him into it'd be going on the third year. I had crossed him into a Golden Gate Gecko Sun Glow, and got some real nice nice babies out of that and I just doubled up on them this year so I got like 75% Ringo and 25% Golden Gate Gecko yeah and then I got a, a nice I did a nice breeding with a blood trimper I got from John at Gecko Boa and they hatched out some real nice contrast real nice right. contrast and I've been like I've been loving it but you may tell you one of the nicest ones that I've one of the nicest, most darkest, like if you're going for color, one of the nicest pairings I've done has been Ringo bred to the Pure Atomic. I got a Pure Atomic female from Matt at Sasselback, paired it yeah. to to to, to uh, Ringo and hashed out some crazy babies. Hashed out some wow. real like they're like a dark, they're like a rusty red. With the uh, forest green bands, forest green bands. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's nice. Yeah. So you want to take a caller real quick? Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. They can right, so we got a, We got Sam from Leopard Gecko Love. Sam, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? How good. you doing, Sam? Good. Miss Sam. Good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Um, I had a question. When you say the Ringo line, what what is Ringo for us? I don't. Ringo, you want to know his lineage? Yeah. yeah. What 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 is? Where is he, he is, from? He is from JMG. He is a visual blood stonewash raptor. He okay, visual... I have another question about that. What what is the stonewash? It is it's still it's really a... new, so. It's a it's a line bread trait, and I've been working with it. And I from from what I've hatched out and what I've came up with, you you 
have to to hatch out blood stonewash. Now, you'll get and you'll see the blood trimper pop out like soon as you'll see because there'll be 50% blood. And then the stonewash gene comes in after you line breed that a couple of seasons. You have to line breed it. Me, how I've been getting it is I'll take Ringo to a high contrast trimper, say a sun glow or something like a um like a tangerine a super tangerine uh trimper albino and I'll cross him back to his daughters and that's how I've been getting the third generation is when you start seeing the stonewash effect. But you have to get it, you have to have you have to start with a visual from from the work that I've been getting out of it. Does that okay. answer it pretty it's- much? No, um, well, kind of, a little bit. I get that it's a line bread trait, but uh-huh. how is, how is it actually like? Is it just a pigmentation, like a reduced pigmentation, or how it's, are you obtaining the actual stone wash? you have you ever seen one? I I've, I've seen them on uh, your site. Have you ever but looked I don't, at them? Like I, I'm not understanding like what it actually is. Like what's the gene? Is it an actual gene or is it? It's, just... a, it's a line braid trait. It's a line braid trait. Okay. And to get it, you have to start with a visual. You have to start with a visual from JMG or from me. I just now started hatching the visuals out this year, and this is my third season working with it, line breeding it, and I just this year started hatching out visual blood stonewash raptors. Now. Last year, I was hatching out blood trimpers, het for raptor, but it's a line bread trait. It's kind of tricky. It comes with a lot of, it seems like you get it when you pair, when you line breed either siblings or father to daughter, and it, it, the female has to be very high contrast. The more high okay. contrast is the is the quicker way you'll get to it, but it's a line bread trait. You have to start with a visual and then line breed siblings or father back to daughter to get that desired trait. Okay, so originally it was a just a random line bread mutation. Yeah. And from there. From there, yep. Started went, breeding up right? on it. Yep. Okay. Does that make sense a little bit? Yeah. That does actually. <laughs> well thank you. It's kinda of hard. Right, thank to, you. Yeah, it's it's kinda of hard to, to to like it's better for me to show you like if 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 I was there and I was showing you the animals. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, I get the visual like Yeah. Yeah. I got you. All right. Thank you for your call, Sam. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. And that was Sam, right? Did she give her last name? Yeah. Uh Sam Victory? Van Sam Victory? Yeah, okay, I'm Leopard Gecko Love. Name. Leopard yeah. Gecko Love. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it seems like to me the stonewash is almost like high contrast that plays outside of those bands, you know, because on the stonewash it kind of just, like, floats into the rest of the animal, where, like, on a high contrast, like a tangelo, you know, it's it's white, orange, white, orange. Uh-huh. It seems like uh, it, just comes, it, it just flows right in together. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. I've been working it now. I've been working on it now for the past four and a half years. And it took me to this year to, to hatch out visuals that look. Uh, they're not as dark, stonewashy as Ringo is, but it is, you you definitely see it. You see yeah. it. Yeah. And then some of them, like, I paired siblings, like, Jungle, I, I paired him also to a, a nice breeding that I did was when I paired him to the, I had got some Trimper Jungle Red Stripes. They were JMG's line, the Trimper Jungle Red Stripes. It seemed like when I paired him to them, I threw some crazy stripes with the with the contrast like flow, like it, you would you would say that it looked at like a red stripe stonewashy look. And the, the head patterns, the, the whole pattern, like, on the head is the distinguished look. It it yeah. brings out a greenish line, like a stripe, right down the center of the back, if you ever noticed any of that. If, on Facebook, a couple of guys got a couple of nice breeders bought 
a couple from me, and they've been taking pictures on upscale. And from the way that they're growing up, they're looking real nice. Yeah. Real nice. It's definitely a, a, it's definitely interesting to work with. Yeah, definitely. So maybe we should bring on another caller. I know they really want to win that gecko. <laughs> 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 so, all right, we've we got, got any more callers. Yeah, Chris, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Morgan? Hey, how's it going? How you um, doing, Chris? Good over here. Good. Um, actually, I called them for two different reasons. You just said one of them before. And also, uh, for you, uh, what else have you been producing with the Afghans? With the Afghans? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I produced, um, I've, I've just bred a couple to Ringo this year as a go for subspecies, but... They're looking like snowy. They're looking. They're looking nice. They're looking more or less like Afghans with a tint of red in them. And then I bred a fasciolatus to a Jim Snow white and yellow. Oh. A Jim Snow white and yellow. So they're looking pretty cool. They're just looking kind of like Afghans. They're looking real like dotty. A lot of dots. A lot of contrast and dots on them. Hmm. Sounds nice. Are you in geckos? Do you do you breed or do you keep them? Yeah, this season, well, the 2015 season is going to be my first season breeding for more. I used to breed just regular ones for the local pet shop. So I actually did just get a Afghan Eclipse Hefferactor like last weekend. So thinking about what to breed her to right now. That sounds good. Was That's a nice about, way to start. Was thinking about a uh, super hypo character. Super hypo character to pair it to. Yeah. That should be interesting. Yeah. That should be interesting. That would that uh, um. Pretty much from what I've seen, Afghans when they're crossed into something with the hypo, you get real nice contrast. You'll have a very colorful geckos. Very yeah. eye catching. And your name is Chris. What is your last yeah. name, Chris? So I can put you in the drawing. Blair. I, how about, how about if uh, whoever wins, I'll give you their last name. That way we're not oh, saying everybody's oh, okay. full name. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You put me in at Empire State Reptiles. Empire State Reptiles? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for calling All in. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. This is cool. This is the first one? show I did. This is the first <laughs> show. I, I'm glad y'all y'all invited me to come on, man. I, I, this is cool, man. It's very yeah, cool to you be. Know, getting more callers than I normally get. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Can, right. I'll, get, I'll take on all the calls. I like to answer questions. All right. Okay. So we've got uh, Molly. Molly, you're on the air. Hi, um, this is Molly. Um, I think Brian knows my, my boyfriend, Brett Justin. Um, yeah, I think how are you doing, Miss Molly? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm just calling in for him. He's at work right now, so mm-hmm. I'm just going to check out the show for him. And I mean, I'm trying to get more into this, too, so I'm, I don't really even know what to ask, but if you've got any tips for for me to try to get into this and start really working with him, whatever, whatever you can think about, I mean, just trying to figure out what's going on. Well, let me tell you how I got most of my information that had me real interested and had it going for me was mm-hmm. um, YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube had me get me watching breeders like Morgan, uh, John at Gecko Boa, uh, Ron Tremper, uh, Matt at Sasselbeck. Um, I, I watched plenty of videos from Luxurious Leopards. He Now, Pat, I got a lot of good information from Pat Klein, a lot of good information from his videos. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's what that's what basically got me on it, that and reading, getting those books from Ron Tremper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I still have one of those books. We've been reading that, too. So I'm just, I'm just trying to really get into it with Brett because he's like, he knows, a lot and just kind of doesn't really 
have a lot of time to tell me what's going on. So what you do is you just look at those videos. You, you how I did it? I looked at those videos, and the things mm-hmm. that caught my eye was the things that I wanted to perfect. Mhm. You know, whatever well, catches your eye. I know that we have our uh, like some of the blood trumpers, and mm-hmm. I really. I really, I'm really drawn to that color, so I think that that's really something that we've been talking about working on that line still. So. Yeah, 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 Brad. I've seen some of them. He got some nice ones. He got some blood and marines from um, Ron. Mhm. Yeah, those was hot. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. That's yeah. good. That's a good line to start with. It's always important to start with with, with professional and straight up breeders. You know. Mm-hmm. That's that's yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, Do you no, have any other questions, to... Molly? Oh, not really. No, I'm just trying to hear what's going on with the, the show here. So thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So we do have uh, another question from a caller that's in the chat. Uh-huh. So, uh, Val, you're on the air. Hi. How you doing, Miss hey. Val? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. I actually have two questions for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, the first one is, why only trimpers? What is it that draws you to only trimpers? <clears throat> well, first of all, I, I, I've i always had a rule. Uh, a jack of all trades is a master at none. So... I also looked at it as, well, Ron Tremper, to me, was the first one that really worked with him. He's the first one that really brought him into the States. He's the mm-hmm. first one that, that has that I've known that has been breeding him for 30-something years, and he's got a couple books out. So I pretty much thought if I'm going to go with an albino strand, I'm going to go with the founding albino strand. You know. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Um, and then I do have another question. I would like to know how you test breed your stonewash bloodline. Like, what do you mean? Like test, like test it for like, like what? How, like how you said that it's line bred. So how are you proving it out? You're proving it out. Well, I took Ringo to. I took him to a snow gene. Trimper, Raptor, uh-huh. a, a Max Snow Raptor. All right. I've took him to Sun Glows. I've took him to uh, Super Hypo Tangerines. I've took him to Subspecies. And I also tested him out on, uh, I got a partner that keeps a couple test animals for me. I bred him to a couple male females to see if I would hatch out a raptor and out of 25 babies I've got all normals out of that so he's he's non het for bale and I noticed that to the uh the uh the direction that gets me the stone wash line is the best that gives me the most the most contrast mm-hmm. would be when I breed him to something with high contrast right off the top, like a super tangelo or a blood trimper or something with the same lineage but not from his not from his stock. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, that gives me the best look. The best look. And I and I and I wanted to work with other I wanted to, to see what I would get from other breeders that have been working on their lines for like close to 15, 20 years, and they've just mm-hmm. been breeding those same animals. So I wanted to cross him into that. <clears throat> and usually, I, I, from the way I do it, I see fireworks once I do that. I see fireworks. Do you, have, do you have, like, a set standard of what you're looking for for the bloodstone wash? Uh, I'm looking for something that delivers me a high percentage of care tail that runs flush with the – like the first couple of years, I would get full care tail, all right? But mm-hmm. the bodies would be a uh, dark yellow, and the tail would be like a fluorescent pink red, okay? 
Okay. And I noticed that when I went back and double bred on it, it started getting more flush to the tail match the body. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Don't that make sense? And that's that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get. Pure, well, now I'm on something else. I'm really trying to produce a blood black blood raptor. But before, because I've I've gotten it to where it runs flush from from tip of the nose to the tip of the tail to be all one set color, all dark orange. So, yeah, I pretty much got that. Now, only thing I gotta do is prove out some of his sons to see if they're producing just as well as he is. I prove I bred a couple of his, I, I bred two of his sons, and they're producing full care tail also. So hopefully, the other sons it, it's, it is a trait that is passed on. I know on these other two it has, but I still have a lot more check, to check out because I've held back everything for four years. Well, cool. Good luck. Yeah. I hope you prove it out. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And All your right, name thank was you for again? Your call, Val. That's well, Val. I your name. Uh, Valerie. Valerie. Okay. Got gotcha. you. From Checkers Valerie. Checkers. That's me. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Val. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. You, you too. You too. All right. It's going pretty smoothly, huh? Yeah, yeah. So what, you know, I met some of the coolest you, people in this hobby. <laughs> yeah. Have you hatched out any, like, 100% carrot tails this year? Yeah. I hatched out a lot of them. I is that is that proven to be, a, like, a, a line bred? You know what I mean? Like, you, hack, you, you breed a 100% carrot tail to 100%. Do you get all 100%? Or have you found that there's, it, like, varies a little bit? Well, I noticed that, okay, the males, like, say if I breed him to, say if I breed Ringo to one of his daughters or one of one of the ones with this, with that uh, sun glow lineage, with the Golden Gate sun glow lineage, yeah. I, I get a high percentage of care tells. Like, like, say out of a female, I would get, say if I get 10 babies, I would get like eight would have very nice care tail and about three of them would have about full care tail. And as a matter of fact, all of them would have nice care tail anywhere between 40% to 100. Nice. Anywhere between 40% to 100. But it's a very higher percentage when you breed him to something that has been line bred itself. You feel me? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like, like yeah. you're working, you've been working with your son goal line for, and crossing them and line breeding them for 15, 10 years, and you've been breeding the same animals, just mixing it up here and there to aunt, to uh, aunt to nephew, brother to sister, you know, father back to granddaughter. And then I come in and I put it with Ringo. It seems like I'll get a very nice percentage of care tail since he's already thrown it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Anything with trim, with the trim, it, it just goes good with trimpers. I've been getting good at least forty percent up out of it. But when I breed him back to his daughters with that with that sun glow lineage, yeah, I get a high, very high percentage. Like I say, seventy five percent of them come out with full care tail, anywhere between eighty to a hundred percent. This year I hatched out about fifty geckos with eighty percent to a hundred a hundred percent care tail. Right on. That's that's pretty cool. So you, yeah. you want to take another caller? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. All right, Elsa, you're on the air. Well, hi guys. How you doing? Good? I'm doing all right, Brian. I've I, I've looked forward to this for a long time. Cool. Um, no, don't enter me in any contest tonight, you guys, because I've won a lot of nice things this, this year, and so let somebody else win something. But okay. I wanted to ask you, um, uh, are, are there any color more? I'm, I'm aware of the giants and the super giants, but are there, are there any color morphs that you think grow faster than others? Um, let me see. Let me think about that. Well, 
I notice whenever, <clears throat> since I've only been pairing uh, a couple Raptors from Ron Tremper and really Ringo and his his stuff, I notice when I cross it into the subspecies, I get big. It, it, when I cross it into this to the Fasciolatus, I get bigger geckos and. Yeah, I get bigger geckos. I got some good, nice males down when I crossed them into a pure fasciolitis. Like, I got a male here that's about 120 grams. Wow. And they're they're kind of, like, monstery, like, you know, like right. bulky. Like, a, like if they was a sports player, they'd be like a linebacker. <laughs> you feel me? They look like yeah. they lift, lift weights or something. They're kind of gotcha. strong looking. Gotcha. <laughs> Yep. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any other questions, Elsa? Not yet, but thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you for calling in. Have you ever noticed that any color, any color more? So, like, have you ever noticed that certain lines give you bigger geckos if it's not a giant or, or super giant or anything like that? Uh, definitely the fascios. I, yeah. I mean, fact, you know what I'm talking about, huh? Maybe some yeah, nice size yeah, animals. I, yeah, there, I mean, I did a, a white face total eclipse to a pure fascio and hatched out this thing that was like 60 grams at four months this year. It's big, huh? Massive. <laughs> big head and everything, huh? Yeah. <laughs> They're the, and the I, pit bulls what, of geckos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Chris uh, from earlier was he was asking what specifically are you going to hatch out next year? What do you plan to hatch out from your project? Um, really, next year I'm going for. <clears throat> I hope that I can um, capitalize on um, the stone walls. I'm hoping that I really capitalize and, I, and the way that it's looking, I should be able to clone and get some that look identical to Ringo with that darker orangish red look that he has and um I'm high on that um a black a black blood I, I paired him to a black chur a black pearl charcoal slash dark blood hypo I got from John at Gecko Boa and I got some real crazy dark animals out of that and they're like they're real deep darkish rusty looking you know yeah and I want to see because yeah. paired yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pair them back to each other's siblings, and I might pair a female back to him. And hopefully, I'm really trying to get a, a real dark black blood, a black blood uh, raptor. Nice. Yeah, I saw you posted a picture of some really dark stuff that you hatched out. I got some real dark stuff down off of that, and I got some dark stuff down off of when I bred him to that atomic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I really like All that. Right. that well, project. is cool. Yeah, definitely. So let's let's go ahead and bring on another caller. We've got a whole line of them. So uh, go ahead, keep keep them coming, man. I like to answer questions. I, I like you know I like talking geckos. Yeah. All right, uh, Brad, you're on the air. Oh, I didn't even hit one. <laughs> What's going on, guys? What's up, Brad? What's up? Um, for your Stonewash Raptor line, is there any point where you are going to outcross to like a subspecies just to Sub strengthen the lineage or do you have a plan for outcrossing in the future? Yes, sir. I plan on, um, I really was thinking about crossing it into after I get, after I get a desired look, after I can get it to where it's looking just like, like Ringo, I was mm -hmm. going to take it into the, um, Afghanicus, and I also wanted to put it into the, um, I, I like crossing it into the uh, pure Super Tangelo of what Ron has. Okay. That's so you I, won't be losing everything as far as, because normally you take a step or two back when you when you bring in new blood like that, from especially from a subspecies. Right. So right. Well, that'd, be a, that'd be a good idea to go to the Tangelo. Yeah, the tangelo and uh, but but the Afghanicus is the darker color, so I'm thinking that hopefully I get because when I paired them, I got some pretty decent, but they just look dotty, they're real dotty. So 
we'll see what it turns out to be when I when I'll do siblings together this year. You know. Yeah. But yeah, I like to go. I like the way the Tangelo is. The Tangelo, those are some. Those are. Yeah, I really like that look. The contrast in the way that they are. They really they add to a project. I like that. Are there a lot of people? Are there a lot of people working with the Stonewash Raptors right now, other than you and JMG, or is that pretty much it? Uh, well, from my understanding, I've noticed that Jeff. <clears throat> I guess to get the way that I got my visual was um. Jeff became a good. He became one of my. He became a cool dude. He was. He became a good guy, man. Jeff's a good stand-up guy, man. He's. He's. He's a good dude, and uh, he only had hats on his website, and um, he just he this one time when I um I had got a you know how I got Ringo, I had um I had been asking him whenever you get something hot out of that Stonewall stuff, man, let me know, man. I want to get a mail to base my lines on. Mm-hmm. I want to have a top male because, you know, I always look at the male as being the stud, and that's the most valuable animal. You know, I'm not saying females aren't, but you can only pair a female a year. You could pair males to 60 females. No, for you sure. What I'm saying? So I wanted a very high-class male, and I had got a super snow delivered to me. And um, the UPS guy, that's why I don't never deal with UPS anymore. The UPS guy brought it to my door. It was like 89, 90 degrees outside. And when he brought the box to my door around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the box was burning up from on the outside. So I knew something was wrong with this guy. I opened it up. The super snow baby was dead. I called Jeff up. I took a picture of it. Called him up like, man, this, this gecko is dead, man. And uh, he was like, oh, shoot, well... I'm going to send you that, and for your troubles, I'm going to send you another one to go with it. I said, man, that ain't, I don't, you don't have to do that. I said, it ain't your fault, this this UPS guy's a jerk. You know what I'm saying? And um, he said, you don't want no, um, you don't want another, you don't want a free one? You know, I could put another one in there just to make up for it. I said, nah, man, just give me what I paid for, man. You know, it's not your fault. And uh, he called me back about an hour later and said he had a good mail for me that he was going to give me a nice, nice, nice price on a nice mail, and that was Ringo. And that's how I got him. And how yeah. how old is he? Ringo's about three years old. Okay. About three, three, going on four years old. All right. Yep. Well, I'm going to jump off here so other people can call in with their questions. I appreciate you taking my call, Morgan. All right, thank you, Brad. Have a good night. You too. All right, y'all too. You too, buddy. All right, so uh, Brian, you yeah. want to talk a little bit about your gem snows? Gem snows. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, have you ever seen my gem? You've seen my gem snows, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I got I got a mail from um Matt. He's a gem snow, a white and yellow gem snow. He's 100% hat for Eclipse and Tremper. And um, I've been pairing him to um, I've been pairing him to some uh, nice Raptors I got. I paired him to a couple Raptors down off of my very first mail that I bought from Jam G. Uh, uh, I mean, no, from Ron. Very first mail I bought from Ron is a solid Raptor, and I paired him to some of his daughters. I had paired a Raptor from Ron to a Sun Glow head for Raptor from JMG. I got some cool babies out of that. And I paired them to I paired them to Zoro, my gem snow white white and yellow. And I hashed out some real nice some very nice white and yellows. And this year I just started hatching out some very nice white and yellow raptors. So I like the white and yellow. It's just not as like I like the oranges and the reds. You know, I'm really into the, the the dark, the darker orange and red colors. But yeah, they're nice. Definitely. They're nice. Yeah, you know, everybody has their own taste. Yeah, I've got a question in the chat. Uh, they're wondering if you have produced any super snows from your gems, or if you've tested a gem to a max snow. Um. Well, 
to be honest with you, I did test that, but she never gave me no eggs. I okay. tested I tested him to a snow raptor named Ruby. Ruby has thrown me dubs uh duds for four years now. I th- I thought it was at first I thought it was Ringo uh that just didn't click with her because she's a big female. She's like the biggest female I have. She's like 110 yeah. grams. If you ever look on my page where you see that picture of Ruby, the big old uh snow raptor, huge tail. Tail bigger than bigger than, tail by itself weigh about 40 grams. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's one of the big. It's, I put it like this: if you put a little small guy in there and she ain't ready, she gonna tear him up. You know, <laughs> he gotta be a big yeah. And I, I I tested that. I wanted to see because everyone says that you you know I like to test. I like to test things. I like to see if what I'm getting is if it's 100 or not because I don't want later on down the line someone come at me like, hey man, I tested this and it's not what you said it was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, but I, I've never. I, I when I did test him, I didn't get any eggs. I got four duds. So I haven't tested him again to a, another Mac. I was thinking about doing that, but you know, I just did. Yeah. it kind of threw me off. But yeah, that is yeah, interesting. I, yeah, I got that same problem because my gem is a female, so I'm trying to make more gems before I go waste the season on getting, you know, breeding a Mac Snow to work. Uh huh. Wow. All right. Well, we do have another caller. If you want to take one. <clears throat> Man, this is cool. Morgan, what's what's the, what's one? Of, I wanted to ask you a question. Okay. Yeah. What is the what is your highest project that you really like? Uh. What is the one you most favor? I know you got a lot of nice projects, but which one is it that you favor the most? Oh, jeez. I don't know. Probably. Uh, I hatched out a translucent gecko this year, so that's probably what I'm trying for the most now. For real? Yeah, yeah, it was clear. You could watch it eat, watch little uh, lungs move, and oh yeah, man, cool. transparent, huh? Yeah, you still yeah, got that one? Yeah. Is it still transparent? No, it, it died. It died, oh. and yeah, I had a, a clutch mate or a sibling, a couple clutches down. It had like a clear spot on the side. Like the first one was totally the whole animal was translucent, but the second one had just like a, a clear spot, and it ended up dying as well. So, oh man! Yeah, my my whole hatchling rack is half full of just all of those siblings, so I can breed them together and see if because it, it has to be genetic if I hatch two of them in one year. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's probably my my biggest project. And fascios, pure fascios, pure Turkmenicus. I have I've seen them. How's those Turkmenicus come? Have you ever crossed them? That's been a question I wanted to ask. I wanted that's always been in my mind, but I never asked anyone that's worked with them. Have you ever crossed like any Turkmenicus into any of your like albino strands or anything? No, I I actually got those earlier this year, so I hope next year is going to be their first year together, but I got them from Pat, and he was saying that you can cross them, but I haven't seen any. I've I've never seen, like, like how you see fascio crosses. I've never yeah. seen the Turk Memphis cross. Me neither. So, I mean, they're a lot smaller, too. They're, they're like, small like an Afghan, but really long and lean. So. Oh, man. That would be yeah, hot, though, to see them cross. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, besides going, like, super giant with everything, you can make all the morphs really small. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, those little Afghans, I I haven't seen anything as small as those Afghans. They'd be some little small, compact animals right there. They thrive, though. Yeah. They thrive. Yeah. They're, healthy. They're some strong animals. Yeah, definitely. So you want to you want to take another caller? Go ahead, keep them coming. Right. I want to get it so we I have enough so we can pull that drawing at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stephen, you're on the air. So Morgan, what's up, Brian? Hey, what's up, Stephen? Question uh, about Ringo: Is Ringo going to be your like main stud again next year, or are you going to like uh, let one of his offsprings take the job? 
Uh, well, this year, um, I'm a pretty much I'm gonna lay back off of him just on certain uh-huh. projects. But I do have I got two other males that I'm going to be pairing pretty much a lot this year. I got um that male down off of um down off of Ringo and that Golden Gate Gecko Sungo, Bugatti. Uh-huh. He goes by the name of Bugatti. I always put yeah, I've seen him time. on your YouTube. He, I, I'm gonna pair him to some to to a, a, a lot of females just to see if he's throwing that caratel like that. Okay. And and then I have another male that I'm real high up on. One of my 2012 holdbacks, Sweet Pea. His name is Sweet Pea. I don't really show him too much, but mm-hmm. he has that caratel that I first started hatching. That has that real bright orangey pink carrot tail, and the body is like a off bright yellow like. I was gonna pair him to some things this year too, and see what I got, because he's a big strong gecko, and I would like to get. I think if I cross him into something, he'll he'll give me the type of body I'm looking for that that tangelo look. I want that tangelo body type. You feel me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh can you talk a little bit about the black bloods you were mentioning? I haven't really seen any of those. The black which one? The black blood you said you were talking blood. about? Black raptors? Oh the blood. dark blood, sorry. Some the blood, yeah. 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 I I'm trying to get the dark blood raptor. The okay. Black blood raptors. Down off of the black pearl, uh charcoal and a dark a dark blood hypo female that I got from John. I crossed it in the Ringo, and I got some rusty, real dark babies this season. So I'm going to be pairing them back to each other, and I'm going to take a couple of those daughters back to Ringo. Right. Those are the ones that Ringo will be bred to, the ones that are more darker, the darker ones I'm, I hashed out this year. Okay, cool. Well, that's all the questions I have right now. Well, thank all you right, for having me on, Morgan. Thanks for calling right, me. Talk to you later. Have a good one, Brad. You're tight. All right. Hey, have you posted any pictures of those uh, the black blood recently? Uh, yep. I posted some. Uh, down off of the pearl. Are you talking? Are you talking about down off of the black pearl charcoal bread to Ringo? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I posted some. I posted some. I, I'll send you a couple. I got a couple I took today. I can send you a couple when we get when we're done. I can send you one in a couple instant messages or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I know that. I, I see them, and of course, when I go to look for them to link them in the chat, I can't find your picture anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they resemble. They resemble. They're like if only thing that's different between when I bred him. Now I got some real dark like reddish dark rusty animals too when I got when I paired him to that pure atomic. But the only difference is the ones off of the atomic has bands, has those four screen bands. To where the ones off of the pearl charcoal dark blood hypo female, they don't have any bands. Yeah. Those are, that's how I th- that's how that's that's a distinct look. They don't have any bands. They just flush, no pattern. Have a couple little patterns, little little dark spots on their head, but on the body, they're pretty much just flush clean. Yeah, it's weird. So, yeah, and we did have another uh, another question in the chat. Uh, you mm-hmm. have white and yellows. Have you produced a whole lot of white and yellows this year? <clears throat> well, let me see. I got one, two. Three. I got about I say about a, a right around ten, if not give or take a couple. Around ten. And have yours have yours had any of that uh, white and yellow syndrome? I noticed that people were talking about that. I haven't no, I haven't noticed none of my white and yellows having that. I have noticed though some of my hypo tangerines having that syndrome though. I oh, have really? noticed that. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. I noticed I've noticed that in my hypo a couple of my pure blood hypos after they got a certain age I noticed that the balance started getting off of them and 
you know, they just start wobbling just a little bit. This was just a couple of females, but that's that's the only ones I ever noticed that has that besides the enigmas. Yeah. That kind of threw me off because I don't know what happened. I think it was just after a pregnancy. I think, you know, pregnancy on the female geckos is hard, man. I got yeah. some that really, like, I, I've had some females really have a hard time. And I think some of them, some of them, man, like I had a female that just kept laying me eggs this season, and she just kept laying them and kept laying them, and she got so, like, she got so skinny, man. She just, it just, it, it depressed me, and I, um, I, uh, I had to quarantine her. I didn't know what was wrong with her, and then all of yeah. a sudden, all of a sudden, she just bounced back. But for a second there, if I wouldn't have been up on it. It, 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 you know, you got to be up on them. Them females, some of them have a hard time. And if you're not watching them and you're up on it, you could lose a gecko, you know? Yeah. Vitamin supplement is a must. Yeah, I agree with that. So yeah, we, want, I, we want to hit on some more callers? Or? Yeah. Keep them coming so we can okay. get enough. I could draw, draw, have a nice drawing. All right. Glenn, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going tonight? Hey, what's going on? Hey. What's going on, man? I was and going to ask you, uh, Glenn? where do you see where do you see the future going for the leopard gecko hobby? And for uh, yourself as a hobbyist. As a hobbyist me? Well yeah. um I see it going I, I, I see it going great. I see it, you know, Besides some of the like soap opera stuff, some of the arguments and the bickering at times, but you just gotta ignore that stuff. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Let me tell you, it's pretty much, it's pretty much people just have emotions and, and I've then had my emotions and you know we're all human and sometimes we say the wrong things and we just have bad days at times and it's really been no really no harm. It's just been bad days. But I see like if everybody, you know. Uh, the way that it is, the way that it's going, if you just stay focused and everybody give each other respect and, you know, everybody's opinion is, is addressed, and it, you know, either you can take it in or you don't have to. If you just not, you know, me, I'm learning how to humble myself. So as long as you stay humble and focused, things will be right, you know. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, you just look at it as practice. you got to practice at it. So do you see yourself growing more? And mm-hmm. Yeah, I ain't going nowhere. That's good, man. <laughs> this is my thing, man. I love breeding these animals, man. This thing, breeding animals keeps me in a safe spot in my life, man. You know? That's good, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the call. Well, thank you. And your name is Glenn? Hi. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks. All right. Yep. Thank you, Glenn. All right. So we, let's just, let's go ahead and uh, whack through a couple more callers. Go ahead. All right, Jeremy, you're on the air. Good evening. Hey, what's up, Jeremy? How are you, Brian? What's going on? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. And yourself? Oh, I'm hanging in there. I'm uh, trying to catch up on my Walking Dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that's right. So, yeah, I'll say it's, it's all right. I, I, everybody kept talking about it, and I, I catch a preview here or there or whatever, and so I decided I'd go ahead and start a whole the, the whole thing from the beginning to see what what the rave was about. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, you might be there for some hours. Them things, them, you know, them shows like that get addicting. <laughs> no lie. <laughs> um, where uh, do, do you actually have any other? Do you just breed Leos? Do you uh, work with any other species? Nope, that's all I work with is shrimpers. And that's raptors. all you want to work with? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I, I'm pretty much I got a I got a, a goal that I'm trying to reach. You know, I got certain projects, and you know, with these animals, you got to be able to take care of them. And and with it just being me, and you know, uh, Benty doesn't really like to handle them too well, so <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm just going to work with trimpers, raptors. Uh, you never know, I might get into another strand, another albino strand, or, or I was thinking about getting into, I was thinking about if you ask another species of animal, I might get into the subspecies. I was thinking about starting to get into the Afghanicus and having some pure Afghanicus. 
That's right. what I was thinking okay. about. Yeah, but leopard geckos, yeah, all the way. Right, right. Now, what happens, say, because you're, you're looking for a goal, as, as we all are, what happens now when you hit that goal? Is there going to are you going to try and and raise the bar again, or are you going to be content and just continue with what you've got? Well, once I hit that goal that I'm trying to get, I'm pretty sure another one will evolve. <laughs> yeah, you know, it mm-hmm. seems like something always comes in at the right time. You know what I'm saying? So once I get to that point, I'm sure there'll be something else. Like, say when I get the black blood raptor, then something might pop out with, okay, this one has a striped tail. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's a, like, a project coming out of a project. Yeah. That's one thing about them leopard geckos. You can go different, it's so many different directions, so... It's a, you'll always be busy with something that catches your eye, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't think to go whatever, like, it, it's just an ongoing project, one after another. But that I makes it hard to stay true, though, doesn't it? Uh, well. Start, you start branching off a little here, you start branching off a little there, because this has that and this has this, and... And before you you know it, you're you're kind of behind on the project you were going to, you know. But you have like ten more that are started. Right, right, right. You can't spread. See, I I wouldn't be able to. I, the way that I am, I like to I like to only deal with one or two at the most until I reach that. But then, like like we were just saying, that once you get feel like you're peaking at the one, something else else will show itself, and you can just take up on that also. You feel me? Right, all right, there you go, yeah. Yeah, there'll always be blood, stonewash raptor in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, that's really basically what I what I like. I love the, the way that they look, and it's always going to have that lineage in there if it doesn't have anything else. You feel me? Yep, yes, sir, I do. That's uh, that's really cool. Good, good. I'm, um, I'll be, uh, and you're going to keep your Afghanicus pure? You're not going to put them into stone wash or anything? Uh, Once I do, if I ever, like, once I get ready to get some, like, I've been shopping around and I've been looking at, well, I really like the animals that John at Gecko Bowl works with, and I like that new line of Afghanicus that he's um, been been producing this year. So that would be probably a way that I, I would like to get a couple of them to start off. I would like to get that new line that he's got, that real boldy, dark line that that I've been seeing him working with lately. And uh, I yeah, I, I, I think I know which one you're talking about. That was, that was quite different. I, I really like the markings on that one. Yeah, they're more they're more darker, more contrast. Yeah, exactly, the contrast, yes. And that would be cool. It's all, I feel like subspecies are always has a place when, if you're breeding leopard geckos because they add that kick when you, when you start, when you're inbreeding or line breeding too much, you can always throw a darker specimen of that, like the Afghanicus, since I'm dealing with color. I could throw that Afghanicus in there, and, and then you're talking about other projects. That could start off something else. You know what I'm right. saying? Mm-hmm. Yep. That'd be, that'd be fun. It's a, it is a different game. Yes, sir. Cool. All right, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you for calling in, Jeremy. Thanks, Morgan. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. All right. So, that was cool. Uh, yeah. Is there any more? more? There, there's a couple mystery numbers, so we can take mm. them, and, but I can't guarantee what's behind the doors. Okay, go ahead. All right, caller from the six one four. You're on the air. Six one four. Well, there's nothing behind door number one. So uh, let's try it. <laughs> Caller from the 859, you're on the air. Hello. 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 Hey, how are you doing? Hey. Hey. It's it's Emily from Get Geckos. Hey, how you doing, oh, Miss hey, Emily? Emily? How are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. And yourself? Uh, pretty good. Cool. 
Okay, I do have one question. Are you going to outcross your stone washes into any other projects or lines? Um, pretty much. I'm pretty much going into the, um, I'm going to go towards the uh, pure atomic and back to the blood hypo. Back to pure blood hypos and pure atomics and tangelos. Have you thought about um, doing any snows? Snows? Well, the snows that I really like would be the white and yellow gem snows or pure gem snows. I have a, um, I really like the way that um, I have a, a, I have a gem snow eclipse that I pretty much favor a lot. I, I like the way they look. If I was going to start to capitalize about, I would go towards that direction. And then this year, I hashed out a gem snow white and yellow eclipse. So that baby is like, like you were saying earlier about that transparent baby you had, Morgan. Yeah. That's what this baby that I got here. I only have one of them that I hashed out, and it's a gem snow eclipse white and yellow. So with mm-hmm. snows, that's that's the way I would probably go towards that way. Yeah. That sounds nice. Do you work with geckos? Uh, yeah, we have um, different project, projects going. We're working with um, some white and yellow eclipses. And we have one fascia that we're going to cross to a super snow pet free. Mm. And a max snow giant eclipse to three snow raptors. Oh, that's going to be nice. That's nice. And then we also have a few um, ghost things going. Ghost? Yes. From Dragon, I think that's Dragon Gecko, right? Yes, Dragon. That's one thing I've been looking at. Yeah, did you get yours from K&N or did you get them from Rebecca? The snows? The ghosts. The ghosts? No, no. We got them from Magical Geckos. Oh, okay. Got them from Magical? Oh, they should look nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Are you on Facebook? Yes. Cool. And Instagram. I would like to see them. Yes. Are you on Instagram still? I haven't seen Choo Choo Geckos uh, post anything in forever. I forgot I even had that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell it to you. It's okay. You can sell it to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Alright. That's cool. <laughs> I, I made that. This is mine already. Oh, did you did you have any other questions, Emily? No, I think that's it. Well thank you, Miss right. Emily. Yeah, You're welcome. Thank have you a great calling. night. Thanks for having you're me too, on. Okay. Okay, we got some so more in there? Yeah, yeah, we got one more. Okay. All right, call it from the 917 and you're on the air. Hello? 917. Nope, I guess not. <laughs> well, we can take some more. Right. Is there any more coming in? Uh, not yet. If anybody is listening and wants to call in, you can call one six four six seven one six five four zero three. Let I'm gonna go ahead and try to take this uh six one four, you're on the air. I could nope. barely hear him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it sounds like they're kind of muffled. 614, that's my area code. Is, is your girlfriend calling in? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh-uh, she's sitting right here. <laughs> is that so is there, okay, no, is there any other projects? Yeah. Huh? Is there any other projects you want to talk about? Uh, everything. Not really. Not really. We covered a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, What about pricing on those black bloods? What are you asking for those? Whoa, Morgan, you know I like to keep things back. You know I ain't letting them go. 
If I get lucky and cross my fingers and get one of them work, I probably won't let none of them go, man. All right, all right. Yeah, I love them. I love them, man. That's if I get that, I'm gonna keep. I think, yeah, that would be a a dream come true. A, a all black blood raptor. Just imagine that with the with the dark red ruby eyes. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That would be. Sweet. So do we want to? Do you want to draw a name for the winner of the blood tramper? Uh, sure will. Let me um. She's gonna shake it up right now. We got it all shaken up. You okay? No, he, he don't want to go in there. <laughs> you want to go in there, Morgan? Do you want to go in the drawing? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, I never did. No. Yeah, she just Wasn't asked me? if Morgan want to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me pick it. All right, it's shaking around. And let me see. Open that up for me. Hold on one second. I knew it. Who is that? I didn't hey. get his name. It was somebody that was named. It was the guy with no name. Wait, give me that. <laughs> give me that one. Give me another one. All right. Open this one up. Open it up. Okay. That was a dummy paper. That was <laughs> a, a dummy paper. She threw a couple of dummy papers in there for some reason. All right. <laughs> All right, the winner is Val. Val. Yep. Nice. Congrats, Val. Yep, Val. Yep. That's the winner. She gets that nice blood Tremper. I didn't even know. I, I can't remember. Does she work with Trempers? Yeah, I think she does. Well, she got a nice she does coming now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does now. You right about that. She gonna like him too. He was one of my holdbacks. I was like, I'm just first radio show. I gotta do something nice. I gotta do something big. They invited me on this show, man. You know, I had one one uh, person invite me on the show, and I'll say about a week before I was supposed to get on there, they called me and said, "Oh, we don't think I don't think we want you on there." <laughs> there might be some Sucks problems. their callers. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, Val. You're going to give her the information and contact me, right, Morgan? Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll I'll set you guys up together and get all that taken care of. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. Is that so, is that I it? Guess, we we got any more well, yeah. do a contest? It was a good thank show, you for huh? Coming on. Yeah, thank you for coming on, Brian. And uh, do you have any last words you want to say to anybody? Uh, I just want to say thanks to all the sponsors. Thanks to you, Morgan, for hosting this show. And I tune in to it on a regular. And, hey, y'all all all stand up to me, stand up breeders. And I wish everybody the best for 2015. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. All right. All right. And I'll talk to you later, okay? You have a good night. Okay. You too, buddy. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody, that was uh, Brian from B&B Exotics, and the show is brought to you by our generous sponsors, Luxurious Leopards, Holly's Homebred Reptiles, Top Notch Leopard Geckos, Designer Geckos, SC Geckos, don't worry, I didn't forget you, Brad, and uh, don't forget to check out the new Cutting Edge Leopard Gecko book by Ray Runner of Designer Geckos called Leopard Gecko Advisor, available now on Amazon. Or for a signed copy, go to their website at designergeckos.com. I believe it is $30 shipped. It's like $29.95 or $97.98, something like that. Shipped, you get a signed copy, Ray signs it, and the money goes to a charity, uh, Reptile Rescues. So Ray doesn't take any of the money, which is cool. That's like a rare thing for somebody that is doing something like that. So, you know, it's not every time that somebody starts selling stuff and just gives all the money away. So we're going to give away a book to Sam. So, Sam, go ahead and send Late Night Leo's your address, and we'll give it to Ray. And 
Yvonne says Pickle is listening. So thank you guys for tuning in tonight, and next weekend we'll have something. I don't have anybody scheduled, but we'll see who comes on. Maybe I'll try to get Christina from Get Geckos because I know she needs the show rescheduled. So I hope you guys have a great night, and I'll see you next week.